Hi, I'm Darnell with Wave of Recipes, and this is my review of the Cuisinart 3-in-1 Microwave Air Fryer Oven. So I'm going to get it on out of the box here right now. All right, so here it is unboxed. It does come with a three-prong grounded power cord. Uh, we've got some accessories and a little bit of paperwork. There's a registration card where you can like take a photo of this card and uh, basically um, text it to a number to register the product. There's a quick reference guide and then there's the user manual. It's got like English on the front and another language on the back. And the manual is in total for the English side. We'll see how many pages it is. It's 36 pages total. But of those 36 pages, there are recipes on pages 22 through 36. No pictures of recipes, but several recipes in the back of the manual. So basically, let's uh, have a look at some of the accessories that came with it. There is a turntable for the microwave. It's pretty small. As you can see, it's not a very big turntable. And just for the sake of reference, I'll show you. The turntable is just nine and a half inches in width here. The diameter is just nine and a half inches for the microwave turntable. And it, you know, you can just basically put that inside of here with the uh, part that helps you spin. So I'm just going to set that in here. Let's see if I can get it in there real nice without making too much of a mess. So you just set it. There we go. <laughs> Finally got it in there. But you know, you just gotta get it in there like you would with any other microwave. The only other accessories that you get are this pan here and this kind of a crisping type of a tray type of thing. Those are all the accessories that come with the cooker. All right, so I wanna talk a little about the air fryer basket and this pan. This is the air fry pan, which is used in conjunction with the air fry basket. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put the basket into the pan so that when you're air frying, basically the pan will catch your drippings when you do your air frying. Or if you wanted to just do a bake, you could like take the air fry basket off and you could bake on this pan as like a baking pan. All right, so let's give you kind of a close up here of the cooker. If you kind of, you know, kind of zoom in there. You can see all the functions, these function buttons like microwave, oven, air fry, turntable, defrost, stage cooking, combi cooking. It's got some air fry presets for fries, ring, wings and snacks. Got some microwave presets for popcorn, potato, veggie, beverage, melt, soften, soften and reheat. You got your time and temp knob here. It also kind of presses in like a button. And you got your stop clear button. And you got your start button can also add 30 seconds as a lot of microwaves these days do when you open up up here you've got like a little bit of a hint guide there and inside you see that little turntable and you see that on the inside there's no fan on the back or on the sides there is the light right here in the corner and then when you go up high up top that's where all the action is there you have your heating element, there you have your air fry fan, so this is bringing your heat down, fan blown from the top, the way that, uh, kind of like the Cuisinart air fryer toaster ovens do, with the heat coming down from the top down, and blown on that heating element, so that's pretty cool, and this being a smaller size cooker, I guess we'll see how that works out. And I want to make very clear, you do not, do not, do not use these when you have the microwave function going. You only use these when you're using the oven or your air fry, but not when you're using the microwave. And we also have in the manual this kind of chart that tells you what you can and can't use in different points during a cook. So, for example, of course, you can't use aluminum foil in the microwave function, but you can use aluminum foil with caution during the air fried oven cook, things like that. 
I think a lot of it's intuitive, but it is here for reference if you have a need for it. I do want to mention that you're supposed to leave 12 inches of clearance above the cooker, 3 inches around the sides of the cooker, and I do want to show you around it a bit. On the side here, you can see you've got some vents there for air. On the back, you've got a lot of air vent area on the back. Around this other side, you've got some other air vent there. So, you know, that's a look around the sides of it. And I will say with that combi cook, that is kind of like the fast combi and the Bravo combi wave where I use the combination of the air fry or the kind of convection oven and the microwave at the same time, which is pretty cool. Now this cooker has a maximum wattage of 1500 watts and that's the rated input power for air fry is 1500 watts. The rated input power for the microwave is 1150 watts, 1150 watts. But the rated output power for the microwave is 700 watts. So just 700 watts output on the microwave, 1150 input power on the microwave, but it has 1500 watts it takes in for the air fry. Now I want to talk about the external dimensions of the cooker. They're 17.95 inches by 13.39 inches by 15.27 inches, but we'll do some independent measuring later. And as far as the oven capacity, it says that it's 17 liters. And I guess in their promotional materials, they say you're supposed to be able to air fry up to two pounds of wings or bake up to a four pound chicken. And the overall weight, it says the weight without the accessories is 31.3 pounds. The approximate weight with accessories is 33.35 pounds. And this cooker does come with a stage cooking feature that allows you to cook in different stages if you choose to do things that way. So you could cook, say, having one stage during microwave, of cooking your food in a microwave function, and then the next stage do an oven type of cook if you want to like brown it or something after it's done its microwave type cook. So you can do the combi cooking to do a combination of both in a cook to cook things you know, kind of quick, or you can do stage cooking where it does one function and then in the next stage it does another function, it's up to you. Alright, so here we have the Cuisinart microwave air fryer next to the Breville Combi Wave, which is also a microwave air fryer combination cooker. As you can see, quite obviously, the Breville Combi Wave is far larger in size and capacity than the Cuisinart. And if we take a look at the uh, basically the microwave rotation bottom here, the glass bottom, you know, this is the Bravo Combi Wave, this is the Cuisinart, much smaller, so definitely a smaller size cooker for the Cuisinart. And with the Cuisinart, when we measure interior top to bottom, it's about 9 inches. When we measure interior top to bottom in the Cuisinart, it's just 7 inches top to bottom. Now, when we measure side to side interior, side to side interior for the Breville is, well, I'll do it from the bottom, it's about 13 inches. So, inside the Cuisinart, it's about, uh, let's see if I can get it here good, it's just under 11 inches for the Cuisinart. And when we go front to back in the Cuisinart, we're talking about, 11 inches front to back inside, front to back inside in the Breville is 14, well almost 14, just under about 13, a little over 13 and a half, but just under 14 inches. So in every regard and respect, the Breville is the larger of the two cookers. Also I wanted to show you with the Breville, you get this crisper basket that has extendable legs and a trivet that you can set things on for baking purposes. Whereas with the Cuisinart, you get the air frying 
and baking accessories that I discussed already earlier. With the Breville's crisper pan, you can see the size of it versus the Cuisinart, which can fit inside of it and is a little smaller. But one difference is that the Breville's crisper pan doesn't have any holes to allow for airflow. Things do get soggy when air frying on the bottom of this. Maybe with the Cuisinart, things will have a better crisp. We'll see. And so, uh, you know, you've got this baked pan. You don't get a pan for baking with the Breville Combi Wave. You've got to kind of uh, bring your own pan to put on the trivet for baking purposes. All right, now let's do some quick exterior measurements independent from what the uh, manufacturer says. And for across the top here, we do have just under eight, no, under 17 and a half inches. So it's just under 17 and a half inches going this way. Um, let's do top to bottom. From top to bottom, if you're just going to the top of the door, you've got 11 inches. If you're going all the way up this hump here, you're talking more like a little over 14 inches. So you, no, actually not even over 14 over 13 so about under 13 and a half actually when I get a good vantage point on it so it's just about just a little over 13 inches in height there now when I go front to back I'm going front to back from this hump in the back here got just about just a little over 13 inches going that way so that's the dimensions by my measure Alright, now let's do an initial plug-in of this Cuisinart microwave air fryer. So I'm getting it plugged in here. And when it first starts up, you just kind of get a kind of zeros, kind of like you would from a microwave. To set the clock, you're supposed to be able to hold this dial in. And in a moment, now you can set the clock so I can just turn it to the time, the hour that I have here. Let me see if I can get it to the correct hour. It's kind of moving kind of quick. Okay. And then the correct minutes. So we'll just leave it there. All right. So that's how you set the clock quick and easy. Now if you hit the function buttons, let's say I hit microwave. The microwave option turns up and it shows that the... Uh, turntable is going to be spinning. It's got a little icon for that and I could basically add however much time I want to add out to like 99 minutes or something really high out like that and I can also clear that so I can just clear it out to go back to the default display and go hit the oven and I can do a temperature and I can dial up or down on a temperature then I can press in and I can do a time up and down on time I could clear that. Now I do want to say something as far as the oven slash air fry button. Basically with this cooker, air frying and convection oven cooker are basically the same thing. It's just a matter of whether you're using the basket or you're using the bake pan. I guess if you're using the bake pan it's like your oven baking. If you've got the air fry basket in it then you're doing air frying. But basically it's going to work the same on that oven air fry function regardless which one you're using so basically when you first hit it it shows like the as I mentioned the air fry and the rotation thing but after you've got a temperature and you put in an amount of time and then you hit start then a air fry fan lights up just to show you the air fry fan there's not really a function or a way to undo the fan if you're air frying you're going to have the fan if you're doing oven baking you're going to have the fan and convection or you're going to be microwaving the only thing you can turn on and off is the turntable if you want to turn the turntable on and off let's say i get it started again and i could turn the turntable on and off but that's all and if you notice when i hit the air fry or the oven air fry button there's no preheat it just starts going so it just starts going that's it and there's no, like I said, no adjusting that fan speed. You just have it when you're doing your oven cooking. 
All right, so now I'm going to test the microwave by seeing if it can truly melt butter. That soften melt feature is supposed to be able to just totally melt down butter. So we're going to see, you're supposed to take like a half stick of butter and cut it into tablespoons and put them into a bowl uncovered. So I'm just going to slice these and get them into the bowl. So with my butter all cut and in the bowl, I'm going to open up, put it in, close up, and going to, as you can tell, there's no soft action close. Like the Bravo Combi Wave has a soft action close. You can see the review of that if you're interested in that. And so I'm going to hit the soft melt button, and it's at A3, which is what I want for melting butter, not just softening. It should melt it, and it should be from the refrigerator like that was. And so I'm going to hit start, and it's hitting it for one minute. And so we'll see if it's able to actually soften the but butter without butter popping all around inside of the microwave making a mess. We'll see in a moment. I'll bring you right back when the 60 seconds is up. We're coming into the final second and it's done. Let's see what we have in there. Look at that. That's fairly well melted butter. I mean, it, you know, some of them, you can still kind of see a little clump of some of them. But for the most part, that butter is fully melted. That's a pretty good deal. And as I just continue to hold and move the butter around in the bowl, it's basically completing its melting process. There's just like one little piece that's about to be fully melted in. And now I've got, just from holding it and moving it after microwaving it, now I've got fully melted butter. So that's good, fully melted. And you can see, no mess, no splatter. All right, now I've got some frozen french fries. These are hard frozen fries, and they're in the crisp pan, crisper pan, air fried pan, basket. You know, I got the basket in the pan, like I described. And so, stick that on in there and close it up. And so now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to hit the oven air fry button. So that comes up, and then I'm going to go... I'm going to max it up to 450. I'm going to do a high heat cook of these and we'll just see how it performs. And I'm going to go up to, let's say, maybe 15 minutes and I'll just keep an eye on them. I don't know if they'll need this long or not, but I'm going to go ahead and hit start with that. And we're going to let those go ahead and cook. And I'll bring you on back, you know, after we let those cook for some time. Alright, these fries have been air frying for almost a full 13 minutes and they're looking pretty good. I mean, there was no preheat and just hit it at 450 to see what happens and it looks pretty good so far. Due to it being a microwave air fryer, you can't really get a probe in there, ambient probe, to do constant temperature testing during a cook of something because the door, you know, is so well sealed. But I'll use my heat gun. It's not going to give us a you know most accurate read but we'll see what it says inside it's saying 545 546 i mean like i said not necessarily the most accurate read given that it's from a heat gun on a you know somewhat reflective surface but at the same time i think that's pretty good and look at my fries i mean this is just 12 minutes these are properly air fried and no, 13 minutes, sorry. 13 minutes. Properly air fried. Now it's wondering what, hey, what's up? I'm going to cancel to stop it. But I'll just put this back in here because it's hot. But, I mean, look at this. 13 minutes, no preheat. I just hit it, you know, at its max temp. 13 minutes, no preheat. These fries are done and crispy. Let me just taste one. They're super crisp. They are super well. I mean, I could have probably done 10 minutes. These are super crisp. You see some are almost burnt there. You know, real, almost overcooked. 13 minutes. No preheat. This is a straight up air fryer. They're straight up air fryer. It's an air fryer. It's a microwave. I mean, this is cool. Now I've got myself some crescent rolls. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get these onto this pan here where I have, you know, cleaned the pan off. It's nice and cool. I've left the cooker open to try and let it cool down some 
from the air fry test but I'm gonna get these onto the bake pan and then we'll cook them up alright so I've got the crescent rolls all on the bake pan I'm gonna do another check of temp although as I mentioned earlier it's not the most accurate using this reflective surface with an infrared but it's now just reading 120 or one between 136 yeah, about 136 118 sometimes yeah but it's like below 150 overall well over here in the middle it's like in the 180s but that's you know on the glass so that's you know probably highly even more highly inaccurate but all the same it's in below the 150s in there I do generally believe whereas earlier we were reading well over 500 and I do believe it probably was somewhere over 500 and that was with 450 on the air fry but now we've given it some time to cool down a bit so basically without a preheat really we are putting them in there the crescent rolls and we're closing up we're going to hit that oven button again we're going to go down to 375 and we're going to go to we'll do like 12 minutes it's supposed to be like 9 to 12 minutes for crescent rolls so 12 minutes and we'll hit start and so we'll let that run and I'll bring you on back when it looks like they're done Alright, so these have been cooking for seven minutes, just seven minutes, and I'm going to have to stop and get them out. I've got myself a uh, cooling rack here, so I'm just going to open up, and you see when I stop and I open up, you know, just like a microwave should, it stops cooking. But, uh, let's see, I kind of want them to cool down, they, they seem like they're done, you see on their bottom? they're done. Under the bottom they're done, top they're done, inside they're done. They're totally cooked so I can just well, let it cool down for a quick sec, maybe blowing it or something but do a quick uh, taste. I'm going to cancel this to stop it. But There we go, 375, 7 minutes, fully baked croissants or crescent rolls, the tops are done, not overdone, and the bottom has a little bit of a little, you know, little heat to the bottom too, so that's good. Yes, yes, the crescent rolls are nicely cooked. Okie dokie here, we've got ourselves a three pound butterball turkey breast roast. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to season it with some Old Bay seasoning, some Gourmet Sweet and Smoky Rub, and some Applewood Smoked Sea Salt. And nothing in the video is sponsored, but these are just some seasonings and things I like to cook with. And I'm going to use this casserole bowl to hold the turkey breast roast while it's cooking since I need something that's microwave safe because in this cook I'm going to be using the combi cooking feature that uses both the microwave and the oven convection oven at the same time to try and cook it up and it's supposed to cook it a little faster than it would cook in a traditional oven so I'm going to go ahead and get this out the bag and then I'll get it all seasoned up and in the bowl here all right I've got it all dressed up and sticking it on in here, I kept it in the mesh bag that, the cooking bag that it comes in inside of that uh, container or the cryo bag that it comes in there. So closing up and going to hit the combi cook button. So combi cooking, you hit that and it goes CC1. That's 70% microwave, 30% um, oven. But I'm going to just turn the dial now. It's on CC2. Now this CC2 on the combination cookie, combi, combi cooking 2, is 30% microwave, 70% oven. And so then I press in. And I'm bringing the temp down to 325. And then for my cooking time, I'm going to run that all the way up to like 90 minutes. So now it's at 90 minutes, which is basically the max that you can do. And so with that, I'm going to do a start. Let that go ahead and start cooking. I'll bring you on back in a while when it looks like it's done. 
things have been cooking for an hour now, so I'm just going to check with my thermopen the temperature of the meat. I mean, it's sounding like it's been cooking up in there. It's 190s. I I overcooked. I literally overcooked it in an hour. A three-pound turkey breast roast on 325, basically overcooked in an hour. That's uh, pretty interesting. Now I'm going to take it out of here and just set it in my uh, on my cutting board. Wow, it's like juice is popping off on on meat. <laughs> Just getting it off of the off the casserole dish here. I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to just, uh, I guess, give it five minutes to rest before I cut into it. But it is uh, probably a little overcooked. I guess I should have maybe stopped after 45 minutes. I mean, I've never done a turkey breast roast in just 45 minutes before, so kind of a new territory there. I'm, you know, just going to let it rest, and then I'll bring it back and we'll cut into it and see what's looking like inside. All right, so this turkey breast roast has had roughly five minutes to rest. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cut right down the middle of it here. And it does have some searing on top for sure. The underside, you can see, wow, the underside got even more char. You can see that there. I was wondering why when I was cutting through it, it seemed like it was a little, a little tight on the bottom. I mean, it's... Yeah, I think it got a real, real hard sear on the bottom part there. Inside, it's semi-juicy. Semi-juicy. Um, I'm thinking I definitely should have done 45 minutes and, you know, check things out in 45 minutes to, to see how it would finish. I mean, the manual doesn't say half time. The manual says, um, yeah, you'll cook about normal time, maybe 10, 5, 10 minutes less. But, uh. I'm going to recommend to you, you know, the combi cooking works well, and you probably want to try and cut your time in half. You know, we'll start checking things after about half time. You know, it may literally cut your time. I think for this turkey breast roast, roast it can definitely cook it in half the time it would normally take. So, I'm going to uh, let this cool off a little bit, and I'm just going to do a quick uh, taste. I don't want it to fall off. Just blowing it so that it doesn't burn me because it's super hot. I'm going to do a quick taste. Okay, so turkey roast roast definitely got some char on the exterior. The inside, um, as I said, is semi-moist. It's semi-moist. It's not totally dried out, but it's uh, semi-moist is the best way to describe it. Um, definitely should have stopped at 45 minutes and checked the temperature. Totally didn't anticipate it cooking it up that fast, so exceeded my expectations for sure. So let's talk about cleaning the unit because I definitely have some cleaning to do now. Basically the interior, the inside, you just use like a wet soapy cloth and you can clean the inside up. They also mentioned that you can use a mixture of water and baking soda to clean the inside. They say if things get really tough in there and you get some real tough stains, you can mix a mixture of a cup of water with two tablespoons of lemon juice or baking soda and you can let that boil in the microwave, set the microwave to boil the water or to boil the mixture and then just let it sit in there for five minutes to make steam and then you should be able to just use a damp cloth to wipe in there and clean things out real easy. The outside you're just supposed to use a damp cloth. The accessories that are removable from the Cuisinart you are not supposed to put them in the dishwasher and they say that explicitly they are not dishwasher safe. The accessories are not dishwasher safe. Wash them by hand, warm soapy water, anything gets really stuck on them, just soak them in some uh, mild soap and then get whatever is stuck on them off but don't use anything abrasive. Except for maybe like a nylon scouring pad, they say you can use that. So that's how you clean the unit. So let's talk about warranty. This cooker comes with a three-year manufacturer warranty. And with a warranty that long, I mean, you don't need to get any add-on extended warranties. You've already got three out the box. You just, you know, go ahead and register it with Cuisinart so that they can look you up quick if you've got a problem. But I think that's a good, really good thing to have a three-year warranty 
on a cooker of this type and when it comes to something like microwave air fryer combination it's not something that you're going to run through quick that's something that's going to be like a staple in your house so you know this cooker it is a smaller size microwave air fryer but it does everything really really good nothing that we tried here bombed everything went fantastic you know I should have stopped that turkey breast roast quicker and who knew it would do it that fast so I gotta say the thing does a great job that's all I can say everything it does it all well it really air fries well it really microwaves well it really bakes well it does the full gambit and so you know Cuisinart if you don't know they made a microwave convection oven many years ago way before the Breville Conley wave many years ago they made a microwave convection oven before it was popular so they do have some knowledge of this game from a long history of uh, being able to work with a unit of this type and now they've come with something that's a straight up air fryer microwave and it does a home run job definitely a home run job so with all that in the video description you'll find referral links and such also you can find other ways to help this channel and with those referral links you don't pay a dime extra but you do help this channel when you buy through them and so hope you do check those out also I do hope that you like this video and if you did you can give it a thumbs up you can also find recipes for all these different types of countertop cookers on my blog at superwaveovenrecipes.com also please subscribe leave a comment hit that notification bell and good eating